in this lecture we are going to discuss facilitated diffusion and the vmax or maximum rate of diffusion through facilitated diffusion we previously in the last lectures we discussed that through the cell membrane there are different types of diffusion or transport transport may be passive transport or active transport passive transport does not require energy and it is without the help of atp or nia while the active transport needs energy or atp then we discussed that passive diffusion is of two types it's either simple diffusion or it's facilitated diffusion simple diffusion was further of two types simple diffusion was that uh, could be due to uh, through the lipid bilayer like substances of which are soluble in lip, uh, lipids like carbo uh, carbon dioxide oxygen or alcohol that pass through directly to the lipid bilayer of the cell membrane while those substances which are not soluble in the lipids they pass through some channels which are present in the form of proteins and they go through it this was simple diffusion it was a type of passive transport but another type of passive transport was that of facilitated diffusion facilitated diffusion is also passive transport in it means it does not require any energy but uh, it is uh, through a special type of proteins which facilitates and which has certain limits of transport and which and the limit of that transport is known as maximum rate of diffusion of that transport or vmax we will understand this or explain this with the help of an example suppose for example there are some substances for example carbon di carbon dioxide oxygen or alcohol they are soluble in the uh, lipid bilayer in they are soluble in the lipids they pass through the lipid membrane inside the cell from the extracellular fluid to the intracellular fluid as uh, directly through the lipids as such and they do not require any help water on the other hand is not soluble in the lipid in the lipid bilayer and it passes through some proteins but those proteins are just acting as channels they do not have any limitation but some substances like glucose pass from outside the cell towards inside the cell with the help of certain channels or proteins which facilitates or helps in the transport of substances like glucose and they, that is known as facilitated diffusion but the facilitated diffusion has certain limits it cannot it cannot function um, limitlessly and it has a maximum rate of diffusion after which uh, uh, beyond which it cannot function this thing has been explained with the help of this uh, graph when substances that has to be transferred from outside towards the inside if its concentration increases the rate of diffusion of those substances for example if water if water increases outside the cell then the rate of diffusion through the channel also increases inside the cell but on the other hand and this has been explained with the help of this graph as the concentration of the water increases the rate of diffusion increases continuously this is the rate of uh, diffusion and it continuously increases with the amount of substance that has to be transferred on the other hand in facilitated diffusion the channels or the proteins which help in the transfer of those substances for example glucose they has they have to make some changes in their shape and that changes in the shape takes some time to recover and as long as that shape has not recover it cannot transfer any other it cannot help in the um, transport of any other molecule for example one molecule of glucose comes here and it gets attached to an 
site in the protein channel which is facilitating the transport of glucose from outside the cell towards inside the cell. Then this channel will undergo some changes. It will close from the outside and it will open towards the inside. The thermal energy of the glucose will help it to detach from this side. It will get attached towards this side. And when it opens, this channel when opens towards the inside and closes towards the outside, the energy of the glucose will help in the detachment of the molecule, glucose molecule, and will go inside the cell. But the the time at which this glucose is detaching from this side and going inside, this channel is closed from the outside. This channel is closed from the outside and as long as it has not gone deep inside, it will not change its shape. That's why there is a certain limit. There is a certain limit of time up to up till which the rate will not increase. So there is a there is a limit and that limit is known as v max or maximum velocity it is known as v max or maximum velocity of the or maximum rate of diffusion of that substance so suppose for example we have one glucose the glucose molecule will get attached here the protein will open from the towards the inside and glucose will go inside meanwhile if there is a second molecule of glucose this glucose of mo um, molecule will remain outside as long as it does not open again and it, do and it does not bind to this new site. And this rate and this time of attachment of the glucose molecule to the new to the, um, to the channel that is facilitating will determine the Vmax or the maximum rate of diffusion. So it has been shown with this graph. As the amount of glucose molecule outside the cell increases, the rate of cons uh, the rate of the rate of diffusion concentration increases, the rate of diffusion initially increases, but then there comes a limit and the graph becomes horizontal or straightens and it is not increasing because the con because of the conformational changes in the time it takes to revert to its, its basic shape. So that's how the facilitated diffusion, which is also a type of passive transport, is different from simple transport with regard to the maximum rate of diffusion. Hope you have understood this easy concept. Thanks a lot for watching the video.